monkeys. Yo, what is good, everybody? It's your boy Golden, Golden Falls, Golden, what if, whatever you want to call me. And I'm back with part three of what if Deku was a techno path um, off rip. I want to say I appreciate all the love and support that I've been getting for the last, well, forever. I mean, we're finally in the new, the new year, obviously. And um, I'm going to keep on trucking, keep on grinding out these videos for y'all. I really enjoy what I'm doing right now. So I appreciate that. A uh, shout out to my boy Saint for the music. Make sure to go check that out. I think he just came out with a new, a new uh, beat slash instrumental type of thing. So go check that out. Um, description um, links are in the description below. Make sure to go check that out. And yeah, um, that's about it. I won't make, waste any more of your time. And let's just get right into part three of what if Deku was a technopath. Let's get it. The day of the UA Sports Festival is upon us. Azuku is waiting for, well, his class to be called out. And that's exactly what happens. Midnight announces all the classes from Class 1A, Class 1B, the General Studies, and many others. And then his class, the support course. The support course basically arrives and everyone mildly celebrates. And well, this will be pretty interesting as this time develops. The support course has never been the most popular, but obviously never been the, the least popular by any means. But everybody's there to see the hero course. The hero course is what is exciting. What is the new breed of heroes that are coming up next? But Izuku wants to shine some light on the support course. And with his new gadgets, he will he hopes that it will help so he waits on as bakugo katsuki his best friend actually speaks on on what what is going to happen in this festival in which he all he says is that he's going to win and azuku just sighs knowing that's kind of what he was going to do may even walks up and questions isn't that his friend and why would he say stuff like that but azuku kind of laughs and just says that Everyone has their own special quirky personalities. Let's just say that. So, Midnight then announces the first event. The first event is the obstacle course. She explains that there will be various obstacles for them to go through, starting with a giant tunnel or a corridor. So, the he ha she has all of the students line up and wait as they are given the signal. Now, begin! All the classes begin running through the corridor until, well, it begins to freeze over by someone from the class 1A by the name of Shoto Todoroki. Ice begins to fill the corridor and many begin to get stuck, but Izuku quickly begins hovering above it. Two of the gadgets Izuku has are basically blaster gauntlets and boots. And it allows him to hover slash fly, but more or less just go straight up and down and kind of move forward. He hasn't really toned out all the kinks, but that's why he has another piece of tech to counteract it. He boosts himself up above everyone else and begins gliding using a high tech wingsuit that he actually created and it wasn't too difficult. He actually put some various nanotech so he can control it just manually on his own with his quirk. Basically being able to change the wing size and the wing's direction so that he can sail faster, slower, all of the above. He sails over Todoroki, who is actually already past the ice. And Todoroki looks up as he questions that that is a support course student. He tries to speed up himself, but Izuku is already basically far past him. Already at where, well, there are giant robots. Azuku smiles at this as the giant robot punches at him. He boosts up on the robot's arm and touches the robot, and he begins hacking into it. 
Azuku smiles and looks toward everyone as they run toward the robot. Yeah, good luck everybody. This is gonna be a lot harder than you thought. Azuku then then moves his hand a little bit in some weird way and begins typing on his panel in front of him while he runs. They all look at the robot as the robot begins to break into pieces into smaller robots. They are all lined up in front of, well, the other students, not allowing them to pass, creating a pseudo wall of some sort. Well, the students try to fight them off, but these robots are even stronger than the ones that they did or they beat at the entrance exam. Azuku, well, may have toned them up a little bit with his quirk. Nothing too much where they would hurt someone, but he, he basically was able to do this and stop them from chasing very quickly. Azuku also made, with the rest of the scrap, basically made a su another pseudo wall of not robots, but just straight up machinery, basically slowing everybody down extremely. So Azuku keeps running, eventually coming down to the ravine, in which he quickly just boosters up and then sails right across with his wingsuit, eventually making it to the minefield, in which he just runs across, disarming every single mine, and well, just running on top of them like it wouldn't even matter. But after every mine he disarms, he just, you know, reactivates it right back once again. Eventually getting to the finish line before anyone could even really pass up on the ravine part of the obstacle course. Azuku finishes in record time and everyone is extremely surprised that someone from the support course got here so quickly. Bakugo even hears that Azuku made it and he slightly smirks, but is kind of frustrated, thinking that he can't wait to fight the nerd, eventually, obviously, in hopefully a one versus one battle. So, after some time, Todoroki and Bakugo, who are neck and neck, eventually make it through, in which Bakugo gets second and Todoroki gets third. Bakugo slaps Azuku on the on the back, saying that he did good, but don't expect him to take it easy when the one versus ones happen. Yeah, yeah, I know, Kachan. But let's just get to the one versus ones first, and then we can have that chat later. Bakugo kind of laughs at this, and Todoroki just watches on as they conversate, thinking that Bakugo is such an asshole to everyone else, but to Izuku, he's nice? Doesn't really make sense to him, but he just kind of blows it off. So, this continues on, I, I mean, well, everyone else finishes, and eventually the next event is announced. And the next event will be the cavalry battle and the first place person will have a whopping 10 million points. Azuku kind of laughs at this thinking that well if they just survive it will be an auto win but what's the fun in that? He walks over to Bakugo and begins talking to him. So Kachan, little proposition, what do you want? Don't tell me you want to team up with me. Actually, I do. You, me, Mei, Kirishima? The guy that you talk to all the time? Is that your best friend over there? Oh, he's not my best friend, you nerd. Shut up. Okay, okay, okay. Look, it's easy that way. And trust me, I have something up my sleeve to get everybody's points. Well, I guess on my sleeve. Bakugo smirks at this. What do you have in mind? Azuku explains the plan and Baku Bakugo's eyes grow wide and he smiles even more. He tells Azuku that he is he's ready for whatever and Azuku to ask Mei and then Bakugo asks Hiroshima to join their team. The cavalry battle has well then begins with Azuku, Mei, Hiroshima and Bakugo with a plan up their sleeve not to maintain their points which they would win very easily if they did, but to get everyone else's. So that's exactly what happens. Azuku begins throwing these weird rings around the, the area, seemingly like bracelets. And every time someone hovers above it, they teleport to a ring or a bracelet and grab their headband and teleport back, eventually leading to getting every single band that is on the stage. But there's still one team 
that they lack. And that is Todoroki's team. Todoroki's team begins to try and make a make a play to get some more bands from them. But Azuku has planned for this very much so. The blaster gauntlets that help him fly are not only well able to make him hover, but they're also an offensive weapon. So when Ida comes charging at them, he quickly blasts at the ground, making a small crater causing him to trip. Azuku quickly grabs the band and Bakugo grabs any other band that is there by blasting off of them and grabbing it and, and Azuku teleports him right back on, on so that they're not disqualified, eventually leading them to have every single band in which Bakugo is kind of like half covered by all the bands and had to put some on his arms and stuff. And then eventually Midnight calls it over. Everybody, everybody in the stadium is baffled at this. That's not only did a hero student, which is insane, but a support student helped in, in getting every single band on the stage. Azuku and Bakugo's teamwork baffled everybody. It was like they knew each other since they were kids. And they've been training since they were kids. But the audience didn't know that that was kinda true. Azuku and Bakugo have this sort of fighting chemistry that nobody else really had and nobody else could really keep up with. So that's exactly what happened. They took down every single person. Midnight is extremely impressed and she says some obviously very outlandish things to children that are not of age and then she announces that the next bull battle will be one versus one but obviously there's only four of them so the one versus ones will begin and she will announce who they will be facing after the break so they have a short little break and it's eventually decided it's going to be Mei Hatsume versus Azuku Midoriya and Bakugo versus Kirishima. She explains that she did this so that they can have a guaranteed final of a support and a hero student. And that this will be a first time that support students actually make it to the very end. Azuku laughs at this and Mei is slightly nervous but is happy at the same time. Don't worry Mei, we're gonna advertise your let's say your gadgets a little bit here may is happy about this she in the first place did not care about winning all she cared about was advertising the gear she had so being able to do that would matter to her and actually she has some different gear than in canon slightly at least being that azuku already created some gauntlets and some boots that are far beyond anything she would have made she decided to go a different route. So their fight fell a little bit more like a showcase. Azuku began hovering and flying toward her and she throws something at him, something that seemed to be magnetic. It lands on Azuku and he quickly is forced to the ground, slamming into it. It like propelled him back down as if it was reversing his gravity. When it slammed him into the ground, he landed and an electricity cage began to arise around it. The crowd can be heard saying their oohs and ahs about the device, and in which Izuku quickly was, is able to shut it off with his quirk after the fact, after they revealed all the perks of having this. And well, he turns it off and then Mei walks off, off the stage. They are all confused and Izuku and Mei kind of just laugh. They literally did turn this into a showcase, showcasing the little item or a support item that Mei has been working on for a while. And you can even hear the other agencies or the, the, the heroes of those agencies talking about that item and that it must be super beneficial for capturing villains. Izuku also laughs about this, hearing, hearing this makes him think that he should probably work on that item that is in basically beta stage, but what she made was very impressive. Azuku basically thanks, thanks her for taking the dive, and she says that she should be thanking him for letting her, well, you know, show her, her gadget off. 
yeah yeah no problem kind of worked out for the best you know because frankly if you got caught on there is no chance he would have let you do that she kind of laughs at this and they walk back to the stands as they watch on well for Bakugo and Kirishima's fight. Their fight goes pretty normal. Bakugo basically eventually wears Kirishima down. Kirishima is more like a punching bag than anything and Bakugo is easily able to evade all the attacks. Eventually leading to the finale, the final match between two best friends. Bakugo Katsuki versus Azuku Midoriya. They are both they are both sent out and well they're standing right in front of each other. Bakugo tells him that he won't hold back and that Azuku shouldn't either. Yeah, yeah. It really depends. Do you want it to be a drawn out fight or a quick one, Kachan? Don't get so cocky, you damn nerd. Just wait. I'll show you. The fight then begins and Azuku immediately charges at him using his his blaster gauntlets and basically they're in a standstill. Their movement is practically mirroring each other. Azuku has been analyzing Bakugo's movements and using the blaster gauntlets he can basically replicate it. Bakugo even talks about this saying that he's mocking his movements and Azuku tells him he's not mocking them. He's just using the most effective way of moving around. Azuku begins closing the distance on Bakugo, trying to what seems to get him in a corner. He feels that if he can limit Bakugo's movement, there could be a serious chance that he'll win this fight. So he begins throwing teleportation bracelets everywhere, and he has eight of them, so he has a lot to spare. He begins throwing them around, and they begin inching closer and closer to each other. Bakugo doesn't even realize this, that he's getting cornered slowly but surely, and the ring is getting sectioned off. But the same thing is happening to Azuku. Him pushing these teleportation bracelets closer and closer to Bakugo forces him to get closer and closer to him as well. But Azuku doesn't have, well, a crazy quirk like Bakugo does in terms of combat. Azuku's quirk is all based on machinery, and he knows that. So, he tries to be very, very careful while getting closer and closer to Bakugo, and eventually Bakugo makes one false step, and Azuku throws a bracelet outside of the arena, basically pushing Bakugo into one of the rings and teleporting him outside. Bakugo tries to catch himself by blowing, blowing up the ground, but as he does, he touches the outside barely with the tip of his foot. Bakugo laughs and kind of smiles at this as President Mike announces Azuku Midoriya as the winner of the UA Sports Festival. Azuku walks over and shakes Bakugo's hand and Bakugo just kind of laughs at this. You know, in a real fight, you wouldn't have these little out of bounds rules. Yeah, yeah, I know, but you gotta you know, take advantage of your surroundings. You can shoot explosions. I can make little toy cars move. <laughs> Bakugo kind of laughs at this and tells him that he's downplaying his quirk and slaps him on the back. Eventually leading to All Might, basically giving them their top three medals. Azuku getting first, Bakugo getting second, and well, they decided to save time, they would just give Mei and Kirishima the third place medal together especially because there was literally only four people in the final well at least the final event so this then was the conclusion of the ua sports festival and it went extremely well for zuku but it was more for getting his equipment recognized by other agencies in which this definitely worked after getting about two days off, Azuku heads back to school and, well, class, and when he heads in, well, Power Loader has something on the board. He begins talking about these agencies that have reached out to some of them, not all of them, but definitely some of them, in which the mass majority is Azuku and Mei Hatsume. Yes, and actually, Azuku and Mei, you two are in a pretty good position. Huh? Why is that? Because actually, these some of these agencies have reached out 
and want you to work with them for kind of a pseudo internship but you'll be acting as their support hero more or less making equipment and other things like that and maybe even helping the other support heroes that are already there whoa are you serious that's insane when when do i start when do we start who offered power loader tells him to settle down a little bit and that he'll get right to that after class and to not worry about it too much right now class concludes and obviously power loader calls over mei hatsume and izuku midoriya and begins telling them what is going on he explains that mei got offered by some agencies but izuku got offered by a lot but he recommends going to this one Azuku looks at the person he points at and is shocked shocked that someone like him would actually offer a support hero an agency internship he never does that he keeps everything strict and small yes actually very surprising to me too but you gotta keep in mind though he doesn't even have a support hero so you would be taking on a large bit of responsibility are you ready for that yeah i'm definitely ready for that 100 percent. okay good because this would be more like a work study than anything internships are limited this would be heavily heavily work oriented yeah that's completely fine i'll do whatever i have to do power loader knew well basically tells him that he knew he would say that and gives him a like a slip of paper and something to sign eventually power loader tells him that tomorrow he'll get picked up in a car and driven to that agency azuku super excited tells mei that he hopes that she has a similar opportunity as well and he runs out of class eventually the next day azuku gets picked up by a car and brought to the agency and when he gets out he is greeted by a smiling face hey you must be azuku midoriya yeah I am. Mirio Togata, nice to meet you. Yeah, it's a pleasure. You go to UA2, right? You're part of the big three. Yep, that's me. Wow, this is unreal. Well, Nadai would love to meet you. Let's get you inside. Azuku then follows him in and he is greeted by Nadai. Nadai explains that there's a lot to do for him and that he is happy to have him here. That he wants to put his quirk and his ability to make support items to use and actually for a specific reason to hunt down and find the one and only overhaul and that is a wrap for part three of what if deku was a technopath if you enjoyed make sure to leave a like sub all that good stuff and make sure to comment down below any suggestions you have i have an idea for a what if movie i plan to do very 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 soon i need to get artwork done for it i'm actually right after this video gonna go talk to the person that does my artwork and i'm gonna get that all sorted so i'll be releasing that pretty soon at least like the thumbnail pretty soon not sure when the video will come out but that's the plan and uh yeah i hope you all enjoyed and like i said if you did make sure to hit a like sub all that good stuff and i hope all y'all have an amazing day later well, I don't